Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Parkside Cabin Rentals. No one boasts more cabin options in the Smokies than Parkside Cabin Rentals. And they have a new one for you called City Bear. It's the City Bear Cabin. Completely renovated, four beds, three baths, smack in downtown Gatlinburg. There aren't many that you can find in downtown Gatlinburg. Private outdoor living area to boot. Visit them online, search City Bear, and book this rare opportunity ASAP. It will be booked up shortly. Get in there, parksidecabinrentals.com, and look for City Bear. All right, back with Justin Hamilton, Will Overstreet, Marlon Walls. Uh, Marlon, Tua Tungvaloa. Uh, a lot of people this week said, well, he's got to take care of himself. And we've said players have to watch out for themselves. At the same time, most of the blame for that one can't go on the player because the culture of football which these guys touched on a little bit too. The culture of football is you want to get back in there. Is, is the coach going to keep your job for you waiting? Are your players going to lose faith in you? I mean, the, the, the idea is tough it out, yeah. even when you shouldn't. Uh, we, we play a, a barbaric sport. It's, it's, you're meant to be tough. You're told to be tough. Uh, the, the tough guys get on the field, right? Uh, we, we know it in the locker room where – uh, we see a player and he's not very physical, right? First thing we do is we call that person soft. Hey, that right. guy can't play any football. He's not tough, right? So in that situation, like Tua, uh, somebody has to be there to say, you know what, I've got to defend this person from themselves. Uh, obviously, especially when you take a ding in the head, that's different from a leg injury, right? A ding in the head, that person's not where they are supposed to be on a normal basis from a mental capacity. So uh, somebody, somebody dropped the ball there. Uh, I would tell you, as a football player, the person, the people I am most closest with within a locker room or in the atmosphere of football was always the trainers uh, because we had a love-hate relationship. If I had an injury uh, and that trainer tells me, hey, you're ready to go by Monday and it doesn't feel right with me, I'm going to go back to that person and say, no, I don't feel good. Uh, what you're telling me I can do, I cannot do right now. Well, you should be able to based off what we, our schedule. No, like I know my body better than you know my body. Right. And I'm telling you right now, I can't go do that. Uh, and so if you don't have that kind of relationship, that kind of uh, mental fortitude to take care of your body, somebody has to be able to step in and take over for that. Uh, the people, like I said, the people I love the most within uh, University of Tennessee complex is the trainers because we would go back and forth. I'm going to tell you what I can and cannot do. Uh, I'm going to be here and I'm, I'm going to do your re, I'm going to do your research. I'm going to your, your rehab, but I know my body better than I know than somebody else does. And in that situation, uh, I don't feel like tools able to, to fend for itself. Heck, all you have to do is watch the tape, right? Then to turn around and go to a short week on a Thursday and play that guy. Uh, it was irresponsible. Yeah, very irresponsible. And you also have to remember where did Tua come into this year? Tua comes into this year, a guy that like, are they going to stay with him long term? Right. So he's got some doubts about yeah. his career. So I'm sure he's thinking that. And also, he's a guy that's been injury prone. So what are they? Those two things. If a guy's a little bit concerned about maybe where am I going to fit in a franchise, uh, long term plans, and then also I've been injured. I've had this reputation. I need to show I am the tough guy and the leader. That can also lead you to make bad decisions and yeah. try to say, well, I can get through it this time. So you're right, especially with a head injury because, you know, it's not obvious at times when you've recovered or not recovered. You have to be able to have somebody else slow that guy from himself. Just when you look at, we, we talked about this a little bit earlier, and I'll bring it to you. You look at a guy like Cedric Tillman who underwent this. It's, it's a relatively new procedure, this tightrope thing. And I, I'm not a doctor. You can go find 100 orthopedists who will say it's fantastic, greatest thing in the world. I'm sure if I deep dig long enough, you'll find some orthopedists who say, I wouldn't do that, uh, like anything. Uh, Tua Tungavailoa had that at Alabama twice. First time, reportedly, he was happy with it. The second time, he was worried that it might have led to him having a hip injury. When you look at a player Trying to get them back on the field is job one. But at the same time, if you're a coach and a training, you don't want to rush them back in and lose them long term. So it's kind of a, you got to weigh those options, don't you? Absolutely. And it, it, I don't know how you can ever tell. I mean, obviously the, the physicians, the medical people will say he's at no further risk of re-injuring himself or further injuring himself. I don't know how you can really determine that. I mean, and if they're not, then you're still at risk with the other injuries that can happen out there. So 
There's certainly concern. I think that it, it, the biggest thing is like everything else, to his instance, Cedric Tillman's ankle, it's all so visible now. We all can see everything about it. You can see through the week what his rehab is looking like or what his progress is looking like. Everybody can see it. You can see the, the play that got him hurt over and over and over. And it's really becoming the only right choice is to make sure that the player is better before you get him back out there. But again, I think when medical people that are trusted say he's ready, then we have to, if we put our faith in those medical people, we have to take their word and try to go. If they say he's not ready or he feels with his body that he's not ready, then you got to give him that time. Quickly, there are so many coaches out there. I thought this was interesting. As soon as the Alabama game ended yesterday, Nick Saban, and maybe you look at it and you say, well, he's running a pro franchise. He can afford to say this because he's got so much talent. Immediately after the game, unasked, he said, uh, well, he sprained his shoulder. I don't think it's too serious. He's had these before. He's telling this to the sideline reporter. There are other coaches who you could put a gun to their head, pull their teeth, and they'll say, uh, he's day to day. I don't know what's wrong with him. Uh, we'll see how he is. They're not going to give you any information because that's some sort of state secret that gives you a benefit. Uh, how much of that – I've got to think, if you're going up against an opponent and they're trying to tell you their guy could be in there, aren't you preparing for the same way yes. or no? No, you are. You're pre you have to so prepare it's all kind for of that because you can be told it is. You okay. can be told for a whole week this guy's not going to play in any place. So I think you got to prepare as if they're going to have their full, full arsenal. All right, very good. I need more coaches like you out there who just tell us what's going on. All right, uh, and I'm sure the next coaching gig you get, you'll go back to. All right, uh, when we come back, why Vol fans and Vol media should be focused on LSU alone, nothing else. It's a one-game season. We'll talk to Justin Hamilton about how often a coach sees the same performance, the same level from his team over the course of a season. Hint, not often. Come on back on the Sports Source.